Hi there guys, welcome back to another online lecture for Organic Chemistry 2 and today we are going to continue the alcohol lecture and in this particular portion we're going to continue synthesis. We took a look at the Grignard reaction last time and now we are going to take a look at one of the probably most prevalent organic synthesis reactions, especially in Organic 2, which is reduction. And reduction is, it's the same type of reduction when we talk about oxidation reduction or redox reactions, but in general chemistry it's a much broader scope. Remember in organic we're dealing with carbon, and so we're really looking at the oxidation or reduction of carbon, and in organic chemistry reduction of carbon means to lower the number of carbon oxygen bonds, and you're going to usually increase the number of CH bonds instead. Okay, now think about what's happening here. If I have a carbon oxygen bond, the oxygen is partially negative, the carbon is partially positive. So the more carbon oxygen bonds I create, if I'm increasing them, that means that I am oxidizing because oxidation is a loss of electrons. Remember Leo Ger or oil rig? So loss of electrons is oxidation, gain of electrons is reduction. And so in this case, if I'm lowering the number of CO bonds, meaning that I'm reducing this scenario up top right here, I'm getting rid of more carbon oxygen bonds, that means that I am no longer losing as much electron, losing as much electron property for the carbon. Okay, so just keep that in mind when we're talking about this. Now, when we talk about reduction, there are two major reduction reagents that usually are approached during the alcohol chapter. This is by no means the only two reducing agents. They're just two of the most common. The first one is sodium borohydride, which is represented as NaBH4. And we also have lithium aluminum hydride, L-I-A-L-H4. And I'm just going to let you know because I'll do this a lot as well. Many chemists will abbreviate this as LAH for lithium aluminum hydride. Now, what are these compounds, these reduction compounds? Well, if you notice, the term hydride is present whenever I'm talking about these. So sodium borohydride, lithium aluminum hydride. A hydride is a source of H-, minus, which is going to become a nucleophile when we send it in to attack carbonyl positions, which we'll look at in just a minute. But if I take a look at the Lewis structure for boron trihydride, I really end up with a complex that looks like this. I've got a boron with these four hydrogens, and I can kind of couple this as one large Lewis structure. And then I also have an ionic form where I have sodium. So I have Na+, plus, and then this whole group is a BH4 minus. Same thing here, I've got lithium plus, all right, and then I've got aluminum and my four hydrides, my four hydrogens, one of them will be a hydride, minus. Okay, so those are the structures. Now, the NaBH4 happens to be a weak reducing agent, so it'll still work very effectively in some of the reactions. However, the lithium aluminum hydride is a strong reducing agent. Now, a lot of students will ask why is NaBH4 weak and why is lithium aluminum hydride strong, right? Well, that really comes down to, if you take a look at the Lewis structures, boron's electronegativity value, okay? Now this is, you're gonna get varying values on different charts, is approximately 2.0. Remember that fluorine at the top is equal to 4.0. That's sort of the gold standard. That's the most electronegative element you can get. Aluminum has an electronegativity value of around 1.6, 1.6, 1.7. So what happens is the boron is going to be more electronegative, whereas the aluminum is going to be less electronegative. If this boron is more electronegative than the aluminum is, that means that it can hold on to these hydrogen bonds better than the aluminum can, right? Because it's got a stronger pull on the electrons in this bond. So if these reagents are attempting to release hydrogens to create hydrides that can go out into solution, 
the stronger the electronegativity of the central element, the more likely it is to hold on to the hydride instead of let it go out into solution. And so that's one of the reasons why the lithium aluminum hydride is a stronger reducing reagent because the aluminum is actually weaker in terms of its electronegativity. So it will more readily or more easily generate these electrons that are needed in the form of a hydride. It'll let go of those and allow them to go out into solution as a hydride. So just a side point because a lot of students will ask me that. Then a lot of students will tend to ask me, okay, well, if we have a weak and a strong, why don't we always just use the strong instead of the weak? And the answer is very practical more than it is chemical um, because this is safer. Sodium borohydride is safer to work with. Uh, you don't have to take quite as many precautions. You can use this and measure this out on an open balance, whereas you cannot leave lithium aluminum hydride exposed to the moisture in the air. So there's different safety concerns involved with that. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're actually going to use these now that we have these reagents. So there are several different carbonyl compounds, keeping in mind that we're looking to create alcohols, okay, from these carbonyl compounds, just like we did in the Grignard reaction. So the ones that I'm going to list here are aldehyde, and I'm going to abbreviate these, ketone. I am going to look at an ester in this case. We did not look at that back when we did the Grignard reagents, and then a carboxylic acid. So let's draw all of these generalized functional groups. We've got the aldehyde, some R group there. We've got the ketone, which is going to have two R groups. We've got an ester, which is going to have an R, C double bond, O, and then there's another O with an R, okay? And the carboxylic acid, R, C double bond, O, OH, right? So we have the carboxylic acid. So all of these are able to be reduced, and when I do reduce these, I'm going to get an alcohol. So all of these will reduce to an alcohol. Now in a lesson or two we're going to talk about oxidation which is where we're going to take alcohols and create these functional groups out of the alcohols but we're not quite there yet. Okay so for reduction aldehydes and ketones can use the weaker reduction. So I use NABH4 as my reducing agent and we'll talk about the mechanism in a minute. And I also want to follow it up with H3O plus, just like I did with a Grignard reagent. Okay? So the ketone can also have this same generalized process. I can use NaBH4 and H3O plus. Now, an ester will reduce to an alcohol using NaBH4, but it is horribly slow. It is very, very slow. The esters and the carboxylic acids, because they have a little more of this oxidation going on, they have additional uh, carbon-oxygen bonds, we tend to need stronger reagents. And so lithium aluminum hydride is favored for the esters. And in fact, carboxylic acids will not reduce at all with NaBH4. You have to use the lithium aluminum hydride when you get to that point. So both of these will stick with a lithium aluminum hydride as our reagent choice and they all get followed up with an acidic workup. Okay, So what do I get here? Well, when I reduce, and again, we'll talk about the mechanism in a minute. When I reduce my aldehyde, I'm going to end up with a primary alcohol. Whenever I reduce a ketone, I'm going to end up with a secondary alcohol. Whenever I reduce an ester, I'm going to end up with a primary alcohol. And whenever I reduce a carboxylic acid, I will end up with a primary alcohol. Now, we are going to look at the mechanism for the aldehyde and the ketone in this chapter. It's a little bit early to be looking at the ester and the carboxylic acid. We will get to these. We will look at these mechanisms and we will get to them when we get to the carboxylic acid and the carboxylic acid derivatives chapter but it's a little early on so if you can master the aldehyde and the ketone at this point you're in good shape so let's take a look at the mechanisms and how this is going to work all right so 
if I have, let's start with the aldehyde. If I have the aldehyde, right? I'm gonna have the generalized form of an aldehyde here. And the first thing that I'm concerned with is the NABH4. And specifically, what I need is I need one of the H's from the BH4. So that's what I'm really gonna draw up here. Okay, now, if one of these H's is going to become a nucleophile, it needs to take the electrons with it. So it needs to become the hydride itself. We can show that as either we can have this leaving and going to the hydrogen to form the hydride, then the hydride attacks. Or if you realize that these electrons are going to go with the hydrogen, you can show that the hydride, okay, now keep in mind, that this right here is the hydrogen taking the electrons and coming over. It's not this whole molecule. It's not the boron. I didn't draw this arrow coming from the boron here. So when I get to this point, the hydride, which again is a H minus as a nucleophile, has attacked. Just like the Grignard, we have that R group that attacks. Here, we have a hydrogen that has attacked. This hydrogen is still present, right, from the aldehyde, but as usual, I have to move my oxygen up just like I did in the Grignards. That's the only way that I can make room for a new bond to the carbon because I cannot have a carbon with five bonds. So the Na, similar to the Grignards magnesium bromide, the Na from the NaBH4 will come and help stabilize this. And then in round two, I've got my H3O plus because remember there's acidic workup that is utilized in these. And the oxygen will come, just like it did in the Grignard reaction, take a proton, generate the water, and here I go. I've got R, I've got the C. Notice that the C has two H's on it. So CH2, and this O has become an OH. So I have a primary alcohol. Okay. All aldehydes will reduce to primary alcohols. So hopefully this makes sense in terms of the mechanism. Now see if you can follow along while we do the ketone. So if I do the ketone functional group, same general premise, just like we saw with the Grignard when we did aldehydes and ketones for Grignard. So what I would do, and by the way, if you use lithium aluminum hydride, same premise. The aluminum lets go of a hydrogen. We go in and we do the attack, okay? So for the ketone, I've got R, C double bond O, R, Right? Keeping in mind this is partially positive, this is partially negative. This is a great electrophile right here. And the boron trihydride, which I'll draw out again here, is going to be used. We'll have the hydride come in and attack the carbon, which will open up the oxygen. So I'm going to have R, as I come down here to this intermediate, I have R, C, I've added an H, I've got an R, I've got the O minus with the Na plus, right? And then I have H3O, which is my acid workup plus. The oxygen will come to grab one of these hydrogens. That is going to release these electrons to form water. And what I end up with is, let's look at this R. The carbon is attached to another R on this side here. It has a hydrogen, which I can include in here as a CH, and it has an OH up top. So I've created a secondary alcohol when I utilize ketones with reducing agents. So aldehydes, primary alcohols, ketones, secondary alcohols. These are the two mechanisms you should know. You should still know that esters and carboxylic acids will form primaries and that they require the lithium aluminum hydride. But as far as the mechanism, we can take a look at that later. These are the only two major mechanisms you should know at this stage. That's good enough to start with, okay? So if I were to give an example here, let's take a look. Um, I will give you a ketone, right, with NABH4 as the first step and the second step H3O plus. Then I will give you, let's do acetic acid. So C double bond O, OH. And this is going to use lithium aluminum hydride. 
and H3O plus. And then that's good. So let's take a look at those two. Okay, actually, you know what? I'll throw I'll throw an aldehyde in here. So let's do CH3, CH2, C double bond O, uh, H. And we'll use the NABH4 for that. So go ahead and pause this. Try to work through these problems and see if you can figure out what you would get for the answer. And then I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, welcome back. So hopefully what you should have ended up with is the following. CH3, and I'm not going to go through the mechanisms here. You can go back to the beginning of the video if you want to look at that. CH3, CH, OH, CH2, CH3. Now take a pause for one second. Does that make sense? Well, I have a ketone here, and I reduced that ketone, so I should have a secondary alcohol, which I do. This alcohol has two other substituents attached to the carbon that has the alcohol so it's secondary that's good all right the next one would be ch3 remember that the hydride attacks this carbon so i don't lose that carbon it's going to become ch2 and i have an oh this oxygen just in case you're wondering this oxygen becomes the oh this will actually protonate and leave we're going to have this group we can have this group leave into solution um as we go through these again we'll show the mechanisms for that in a later chapter and then finally for my aldehyde you should have ch3 ch2 and then if you look here this becomes ch2 the carbonyl group and i have an alcohol so primary which i would expect from carboxylic acid primary which i would expect from aldehyde so that takes care of the reduction portion of alcohols and the next time that we take a look at a lesson, we are going to start talking about protecting groups for alcohols, the purpose behind them, and what protecting groups we would use for an alcohol. So thanks for joining me. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe uh, if you found any of this helpful. And I will see you guys for the next lesson. Thanks a lot for joining me, guys.